Good morning all of you all out there. Today's goals are simple. Number one, catch a fish on this setup. Might look a little funky, but I think it's gonna work. And number two, eat a fish that's really, really old. And we're actually gonna eat it raw. So what I have here is an ultralight trout setup. I've never used this in the ocean, I don't think. Actually, I take that back. I think I did use this once a long time ago, but definitely not meant for the ocean. This is meant for like trout, bass, probably even panfish. You know, some of the trout that I've been catching on this thing are actually too big for it, but we're actually gonna use this in the ocean today. And what I have it paired up with is the sponsor of this video, which is Pissy Fun. And this is the Pissy Fun Carbon Prism 2000. This is a brand new reel that they just came out with. And um, I'm pretty sure when they came out with this, they didn't intend for it to be a saltwater reel. But if you watch my channel, majority of my stuff is done out in the saltwater and the halibut bite has been just lights out lately. So I'm gonna put this to the test. If this can stand up to a halibut, then it can definitely stand up to whatever freshwater fish you can get out there. So just a couple of quick specs on this guy. It's got 11 bearings, it's 6.2 to one gear ratio. Um, as far as braid capacity, if you put 15 pound braid, which is actually what I have on here, um, you can put fit 150 yards on this spool. So plenty enough for whatever you know, you're gonna be targeting. It's super light, weighs 7.2 ounces, so less than half a pound. And the probably most standout thing, which I don't really know why you'd need this much drag, but if you wanted to, the drag capacity on this thing is 22 pounds. So um, yeah, a lot of drag capacity on this tiny little reel. But like I said, we're gonna try to put it to the test today on some flat fish. I'm just kind of moseying my way out to the halibut grounds. Might actually try in shallow here, but I gotta rig this thing up first. Let me do that and I'll show you what we're using. So here's what we're gonna start off with. I'm gonna be throwing some artificial, say, just kind of casting and then bouncing off the bottom. And this is a dropper loop setup, or drop shot setup, I should say. And um, got the little flute there that I always use. And at the bottom, normally I'd put more weight on this, but since it's an ultralight setup, I don't think it could handle much more than this. And that's a one ounce weight. So hopefully this can hold the bottom. That's the only real concern that I have other than you know, fighting the actual fish with such a flimsy rod. But um, yeah, 15 pound test braid to, I wanna say this is like 20 pound test, or maybe 15 pound liter. Super light setup. But uh, yeah, if all goes as planned, we should have a nice little battle on our hands. So yeah, basically the, the idea with this is just cast it out. Just like so, the casting is great. Not the problem. We're gonna let this sink all the way to the bottom, like that, and then just kind of hop it up off the bottom. And if there's any held around, if any luck, they'll come up and grab it. And if you've been watching the videos, the halibut fishing has been off the hook as of late. So hopefully if today is anything like it has been, we should be able to find some fish. I wanna catch two small keepers um, for this little catch and cook experiment thing that I'm doing. We're in about 20 feet of water right here, so it seems like even up to a little bit deeper, I should be able to have no problem keeping bottom contact, even with such a light weight. We just won't be able to cover much water. If we're using a heavier weight, I could really hold bottom, bounce, 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 and uh, just move along and move around a lot more, cast around a lot more. This one, I'm really gonna have to slow down, really target like really specific areas and um, hopefully there's some fish in those areas. So yeah, not the ideal setup, but I think this is gonna work. Oh, there's a bite. Dang, missed it. There was a bite there though, for sure. Just need one to grab it and latch on. That's already the second little tap that we've gotten. Although really it could be anything. There could be some other fish down there too. It's hard to tell. I've never caught a halibut on this setup. So don't really know what I'm, what I'm supposed to feel here. But definitely something hitting it. Ooh. 
Oh, I had a bite. Come back. Dang. I don't know what that was, but... I don't even think that was a halibut. It was something that just like bit it and ran off with it. But the uh, the hook set setting capabilities of this setup were not great. Here we go. There's a fish. Not sure what this is. I just went over a bait ball though, dropped it down and pretty much right on top of that bait ball. This fish is there. Finally got one to stick. I oh 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 no 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 it just came off. Oh <laughs> Oh, dang. Pretty sure that was a halibut. Look at it, it just destroyed my, my fluke. Shoot. Yeah, big old teeth marks. Pretty sure that was a halibut. All right, let's try that again. Where there's one, there definitely could be more. Dang, how did that come off? I really think that the hook setting capability of this rod is not gonna help me at all, but. I still think we can get one on it. Fish. It's a fish. Yes. Basically what I started doing is just really, really slow trolling. Got tired of casting. I want to take a little break. Really want to set that hook in there. I don't know how well it's going to sit, but still using the same setup, but just really, really slow trolling along the bottom, just dragging that bottom weight through the sand. Probably not giving it the most action, but you know, obviously enough action to get a bite. See how big it is. Oh, it's not even a halibut. Not a bad fish, but not really the target species. Decent sized rockfish on the ultralight. All right, I'll let him go. All right, no skunk, but we're still looking for a halibut. Casted it out, it's about to start the troll, and bang, that fish hit it right on the drop. Oh. Man, such a light rod, this felt like a decent fish, but it's not. Just a kingfish. A big one at that, but uh, this is pretty much a trash fish around here. There we go. There's a fish. There's a fish. Stay pin. Stay pin. Drive that hook in as much as I can. I think my best luck is actually trolling this setup, even though it's not really what I intended to do with the drop shot. But I got a rockfish, I got a kingfish, and I had one other. Oh no! <laughs> Just about to say, I think that feels like a good one. I feel like that was a halibut. Oh man, I even set the hook like three times on that one. What happened? All right, he messed up my thing, right? Look at that, it's all out of spot, out of place. All right, well, this is proving to be a challenging little challenge here, but 
I'm determined now, I'm not giving up. There we go, there we go, there we go. Deep pin. That feels like a halibut. Definitely got some weight to it. All right, this is like, I think this is the third halibut that I've had hooked, if it is indeed a halibut. But I'm not getting great hook sets with this flimsy little rod, tiny setup which I set myself up for. So hopefully we can keep this one pinned. It's definitely coming up like a halibut, just kind of like dead weight, that occasional head shake. But also the halibut are very capable of going on a strong run, so. Want to keep the pressure as much as possible. Yep. Oh no, it's not even a halibut. Well, another species. We still haven't got the one that we originally were targeting, but hopefully. We can find one before the day ends. There's a little ling. See, it's got that blue mouth. Blue underside. This one's way too small to keep. These need to be 22 inches. So, give this one a quick release. Thanks for playing. Oh, look at that. He just spit up this perch. Look at the perch. Species number three. We still haven't landed the target species, although I'm pretty sure I hooked one. At least one, maybe two. All right, keep at it. There we go. Okay. Maybe this is the one that we're looking for. Oh yeah. Feels like a halibut. We're getting those head shakes. <laughs> the bend in that rod, ultralight. We're looking for halibut the whole day. I found quite a few fish actually, but never the target species. And if I'm not mistaken, I think this is finally the target species. Although we'll see if I can get them. We're still a long ways away. Let's see, we got that nice band of an ultralight rod. Definitely never caught a halibut on an ultralight before. Oh. Not super confident in this light tackle that we have, but part of the challenge. There it is. It's a halibut. And you know what? It might be the perfect size that we're looking for. So for what we're doing today, I don't want to gaff the fish. I want to keep it as perfect condition as possible. Um, so we technically could net it, but I'm just going to try to grab it because uh, netting halibut it's really bad for that tail down there. I don't know if you can see it on the camera. Probably hard to see, but that tail, for whatever reason, is super fragile. The fish in general are actually pretty hardy, but uh, that tail right there can be super, super fragile. The spot, or the, I don't know what you call it, the hoops of the, of the net, because it's made out of like rope, nylon, will dig right into that tail. And if, I, if it is short, which I'm, Pretty sure it's a keeper, but to not totally sure. Um, if it was short and I had to release it, having that open sore on the tail is never good. I mean, it could technically survive that, but um, 
ideally we don't want that to happen. So I'm going to try to just grab him here. All right, just like that. Just pinch him behind the gill plate there. Usually that keeps him pretty steady. Take this hook out. This one seemed to be hooked pretty good actually. Ultralight setup, 15 pound test. And I'm pretty sure that's keeper halibut. but let's, let's double check. Perfect, that's a perfect size halibut for what we're looking for. It's about 23 inch fish. Not too big, but still a keeper. So what we're gonna do with this now, now that we've got him, and I didn't put any gaff marks in him or anything, is I'm gonna put him on the string and I'm gonna bleed him out immediately. Um, we wanna make sure this fish is really, I mean, we always wanna bleed out any fish that we're keeping. Uh, just because that improves the quality of the meat, but because we're going to be keeping this fish for two weeks or could be even longer um, in the dry ager, we want to make sure any of that blood is gone because the blood is going to make that meat not only taste not too great, but also it's going to spoil faster. Um, but let's get this hook out first. And so all I'm going to do to bleed him out is just slice those gills and then I'm going to kind of hold them up this way so that gravity does its work and gets as much blood out of the fish as possible. We got that fish bleeding out and I don't want to hold them in the water for too long because there are sharks around here. Seals will grab your fish. So uh, yeah, we don't want to hold them in here forever but uh, long enough to where there's, I don't see any more blood coming out. All right been bleeding out for a couple minutes here. It seems like most of the blood has come out. More will come out as it's in the cooler bag. But the second step to this is we want to get him on ice as quick as possible. And so on a boat, super easy to bring an ice chest with ice. Kayak is a little more difficult, but I always bring ice in my cooler bag here. Um, just got this bag of ice here. I picked it up on the way in. So what I'm going to do is put this fish in here, surround it by this cubed ice, and that's going to be as good as it gets pretty much out here on the kayak. It's gonna stay nice and fresh, nice and cold until we drop this off with our buddy Nick. All right, got a question for you biologists out there. What is this thing? I've seen like a good 30 or 40 of these in the water. And my feeling is that it might be some kind of either a shark or a ray uh, egg. That'd be my guess. Uh, it looks like they call them like a shark purse, basically like a little pouch that has a baby shark in there. And that's kind of what it looks like, but I'm not totally sure. Whatever it was that was in there is gone now. So hopefully a successful hatch for whatever it was, but let me know. It feels kind of like rubbery. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is, but there's a ton of them out here. There you go, that's a fish. Yep, that's got some weight to it. Could be another halibut. Could be something else. Kind of close to some reef area, so I wouldn't be surprised if there was another kind of fish down there. But now, now that it's straight up and down, it's kind of feeling like a halibut. Yep, halibut. I don't think this one's a keeper, although it's pretty close. Okay, let's measure him. Here he goes, quick release. Shaker number two. We're kind of making our way back in, but I'm gonna go a little bit longer, just see if I can get one more. If not, we'll make do with the one we have. Definitely enough to make this experiment work, but I would like to get one more if possible. One more. I was just setting up for the drift. I didn't even turn the camera back on and I hooked up again. Feels like another flat fish. Not sure how big this one is. It's really hard to tell how big they are when 
that line is out at an angle. It's not until you get straight up and down where you can really feel the weight of the fish. But it is feeling promising. There's definitely some potential here. Oh, 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 oh. Head shakes. No, I don't think there's going to be a keeper. Let's see. And, oh, yeah, that's a keeper. Wow, he choked the fluke. I can't even see it way down the throat there. He never really went any big runs, but uh, yeah, that's a keeper. All right. There we go. There we go. Splash the camera a little bit. Another beautiful California halibut. I'm pretty sure that's our second keeper that we're looking for. Oh, look at that. He choked the fluke. You can't even really see it down there. So let's get this one hooked. And I'm going to do the same thing I did with this one to the other one. Or same thing I did to the other one to this one where I bonk him, bleed him, and make sure I get as much blood out of the fish as possible. All right. Both keepers chill on a nice back here. A couple of nice solid small keeper nonetheless fish perfect for this dry aging process i got them both chilling on ice back here and uh, next thing we're going to do is get them to nick as quickly as possible i'm going to go clean up and head over to his house tonight drop him off and then he's nice enough to do a little bit of filming of the process to prep them for the dry age cooler and then uh yeah they're going to sit there for another two weeks feels kind of weird to eat a fish after it's been sitting in the fridge for that long but um, that's exactly what's going to happen so but don't go anywhere two weeks from now i'm going to come back to these fish and we'll see what they look like what's up what's up guys nick fish here doing a special episode for die hard fishing he just dropped off these two beautiful halibut here maybe 23 24 inches he just caught these fresh from the ocean and we're going to do a little dry aging experiment for him. The first thing you need to do is remove all the scales. And normally you're supposed to use a knife so you don't um, damage the meat. Using a knife is um, less damaging to the meat than using a scaler. You kind of bruise the meat too much with the scaler. But since I'm not a sushi chef, I can't do that. I just use the scaler. And basically what it's doing is removing the scales and allowing the skin to breathe a little bit better so that some of the moisture can leave the fish. And next, after you scale the fish, being very gentle, cut off the head, remove all the guts, and then I take a toothbrush, um, maybe a chopstick or a Q-tip, and I try to remove all the blood from the inside of the fish as much as possible. Blood is what makes the fish smell fishy. It also is the first thing to spoil. So if you remove all the blood inside of those little cavities there, your fish is gonna last a lot longer. And those cavities are pretty deep, so you have to get in there with like a chopstick or even a toothbrush, an old toothbrush. But they're in, they fit just perfectly. Actually, their tails kind of go through the grate like maybe a couple inches but perfect I put two containers of salt underneath it just in case some fish juices kind of drip down but these halibut are nice and clean no blood no scales and then uh, before I put them in here I patted them dry with a paper towel Okay, we're out here at Nick's house. It's been actually 19 days since I dropped it off here and uh, Nick's been taking care of it. Personally, I before hearing about this 19 day old fish, I would have just tossed it in the trash, but apparently this is a thing. 19 day old fish, guys. <laughs> Are you excited? Yeah, I'm excited to try it. So this is the, is this a dry aging? No. Like just okay. for dry aging? No. So this refrigerator is just made for um, beverages, kind of like... Like a wine cooler? Yeah, okay. almost like that. 
um, except it gets the temperature gets down a little bit lower than a wine cooler. Um, okay. Wine coolers wouldn't work for this. So this one, you set, you set the temperature, right? Yes. So this is at 34, and yes. this has been at 34 the whole time, right? Yes, the entire time. It doesn't fluctuate because um, it's not my regular refrigerator, uh -huh. so I don't open it up every day. If you guys didn't know, the average person opens the refrigerator like 26 times a day or something like that. I forget. Oh, wow. Okay. But so. Um, so the, the every, temperature would like fluctuate oh, a lot yeah, more. Oh yeah, and that'll make it start rotting. Okay. So um, it's good to have a separate designated refrigerator, um, just for your food purposes. Like you don't want to cross contaminate stuff, but also for the temperature thing that we talked mm -hmm. about. And so, all, like this ventilate, it's ventilating, right? Yes. So there's like a fan in there cycling the air. Yes. So there's and, uh, there's, there's a couple important things, right? You need the fan circulating on the inside, like we talked about. Open. You need to ha have a um, refrigerator that gets down to the right temperature, 32 degrees. Uh, we could actually open this up and you can look okay. at it. Yeah. So, so up here, you can tell. There's a fan in there. Yep. There's a fan. Oh. Um, it's, I like to have a digital thermometer, so it's really accurate, right? You want to make sure you're at yeah. 34. The optimal, uh, temperature is above 32 and kind of, um, below 36. 34 is perfect. So you saw a little bit about what he did before sticking them in here, kind of, you know, cut the head off and cleaned it out really good. Have you done anything to it since? No. It's since been sticking here? The only thing, guys, that I haven't shown you guys yet is when I clean these fish, wow, it's a lot harder and stiffer than <laughs> before. But when I clean these fish, if you can see, I put a toothpick in here just to kind of separate the stomach a little bit, make sure the airflow gets in there good. Nice. But I haven't checked this in four or five days, um, but it's still um, not completely dry. Yeah. But this might be a little bit too far. <laughs> So, so optimal is probably like two weeks. Yes. This is like, you know, been two and a half weeks about now, so. I think, I think they say you shouldn't do it by time because each fish is different, but um, they say you do it by percentage of weight loss. So I think 15, 20% weight loss. Okay. So weigh the fish before cool. and after. Cool. That's pretty much it. Okay. Well, so we're gonna fillet it up. And then I brought a few ingredients to add it. We're really just gonna pretty much just eat it by itself, like just straight up, just to see, you know, get the full dry aged fish uh, experience. You don't 19 have to eat it, old, 19 day old fish raw. Let's do it. <laughs> it kind of looks like a piece of fish jerky, but I don't know if you can see it. Maybe go this way. You can like Whoa. see right through it. And you can tell how well it's bled, guys. Look, there's like yeah. no blood, it's like clear. It looks kind of like, yeah, I don't know, like a dried fish, like which is, I guess, what it is. So, makes sense. But yeah, it's like almost kind of leathery on the skin. Um, but then the inside, once we cut it open, you'll see it's going to be just like a juicy fillet. That was pretty cut. Chicharron, fish chicharron. <laughs> Not too bad. Wow, it's so much smaller. Mm. Yeah, Looks good I think it's because, uh, so like you're saying, it's like a little bit too far, so it's dry, like a little bit of the flesh is dried. Oh yeah, it is. You can see it on the side here. The skin isn't normally that thick. Yeah. So what's but like it won't like you can't cut through it very easily. Yeah, what Adam said was this fish is a little too far, maybe like a week too far. So some of the meat is starting to harden and turn into jerky. Still gonna be Should good try though. A piece of this? Not raw. Look 
Not raw. You want to cook them? Yeah, yeah. Let's fry it like yeah, that's chicharron. Good. That's a good idea. Should I cut them in strips? Sure. You can make a shoe out of this or something. <laughs> Amazing how clear this fish is because there's no blood in it. Yeah. That actually looks beautiful. Little crescent moon. I'm gonna put some some other stuff on there in a second. I don't think Taku could do that. <laughs> like the outdoor chef life of Walmart. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. So this is my favorite way to eat halibut. Red onion, jalapeno, and a little bit of this ponzu sauce on there. This is yuzu ponzu, I don't think it really matters what kind, but. What is ponzu sauce? Like what's in so, ponzu sauce? So ponzu is basically like a citrus and soy sauce mixture. So there's different um, recipes, but most of them have like a little orange juice, lemon juice, lime juice, that kind of thing. Um, this particular one has Yuzu citrus juice, uh, lemon juice, and citric acid. So, yeah, basically just a citrus mixed with soy sauce. Pull these right on. It took us 19 days to get here, but thank you for your help in getting this thing ready. You did probably the majority of the work. Catching the fish was no, no problem. This is like our first collab too. Yeah, actually, this real collab. We're, we're doing the outdoor chef life thing without outdoor chef life, so hopefully Taku's proud of us. But anyways, here's the the dish, the main dish. That's just sashimi halibut with jalapenos on top, red onion, and then we just sprinkled the um, halibut fried. skin deep fried on top there, kind of like a chicharrones type thing. And then this is just straight halibut right here. So yeah, give it a taste. Mm. Crunchy. With the uh with the ponzu it's actually kinda good. Yeah, so I was thinking some sauce on there. Mm. Let's try it. Let me just get a piece of this halibut. So we're gonna get some halibut, a little bit of jalapeno, a little bit of red onion. Beautiful. Try to get it all in one bite. A little bit of ponzu. Get everything right there. really good is it fishy 19 no, day old fish it's like actually less fishy than like the, the normal way that I would take out of the freezer oh it's so good so it's soft. like um, it's soft yeah there's no like I was saying earlier when I was cutting it I could tell there's no like like the there's no chewiness to it it's just like you one could gum piece. it you could gum it yeah. to uh, just like it's firm so but not chewy. It's perfect. Okay. It's not mushy either. It still has a bounce to it. Yeah. But it's just the texture is very consistent through the whole fish. Yeah. Very soft all the way through. That's really good. Mmm. Onions come out. I'll try this too. I already tried one of these, but only only four ingredients, five ingredients but you can taste every one and they they blend really well together. The other nice thing about trying it like this with the ponzu sauce is like, as the meal progresses, like a little bit of that lemon juice, the acid in there, it cooks the fish a little bit. So like, it, it's like a full, like you start at one end and then finish at the other. It's kind of like the 
Kind of like ceviche. Right? Yeah, exactly. Pretty similar. That's yeah. a good combo, man. Fried and raw. That's a good combo. We don't know what we did, but we did <laughs> something today. Yeah, no, he knows what he's doing. You've done this before. Yes, but, but yeah. we're still learning. So still if you guys have any suggestions, let us know. Yeah. Super beautiful. Get some jalapeno, some red onion, maybe a little wasabi on top. That extra excitement. The, the wasabi gives the heat in the beginning. The jalapeno comes in at the end and just punches you in the face. <laughs> and then dip the chicharron in some of this ponzu sauce on top and that's the ultimate the full halibut experience the full experience <laughs> guys skin filet going in nice so good all right well we're gonna finish this up it's a nice little midday lunch for us but uh, thank you guys for watching i know this took a long time to get here but eventually we got here and i think it was worth the wait so Anyways, check out Nick Fish if you haven't done so already. He's the man. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.